Excellent. Hey everybody, Helena here. Kelly here. <laughs> we are Speaker Insight, where we help speakers, authors, and coaches to build a business on your terms. Now, what does that actually mean? That means that um, we have lots and lots of things going on for you. We are going to talk to you a little bit about the buzz in our business, and then we're going to actually do our best to rein ourselves in, because we're quite excited about <laughs> this particular bit of training. And um, it's not so much about Avatar, no, which is quite shocking. No, right? but we will get the word in there, and we will actually say it once in a while which is really rather good so we will start as you are all kind of joining us uh, good morning to those of you in the states who are watching and uh, for those of you who are watching later on and couldn't join us live please do a hashtag replay when you begin this because we do like to know that you are there and getting some value out of the training that we're providing um, so the buzz in our business which we always start with and we obviously want to know about the buzz in your business um, for those of you whether you are just joining us on speaker insight or whether you're in the connection hub and kind of really put in the links to the connection hub seasons. as we speak kelly kelly sits and does all of that she's sharing out I'm things sharing so that out. it's going live in the connection hub live in change maker and it's all good so uh the buzz in our business so the things that are going on that are really keeping us interested and in, that we're serving people with Tomorrow, we have the Connect and Create Day. We That's do. really exciting. So 16 people coming to work on their businesses, usually kind of in the Connection Hub, people that are meeting each other for the first time, but who kind of already know each other because they've been connected through the hub, which is really rather good. Um, that's happening uh, tomorrow. Um, the next one, date for your diary, uh, and we'll put out links and those types of things over the next sort of week or so. The next one is on the on May the eighth. So put that one in your diary if you fancy coming along, meeting some of the people who are like you, speakers, authors, and coaches that are going out and making big changes in the world, um, and that you just want some one-to-one -one feedback yeah. from us, and and that you actually want to sit down and get your head down and actually work on things but not lonely and at home, but in a group of people that are like-minded. How amazing <laughs> is that? So um, let us get sort of towards the, the content that we're doing today. Um, it was a pretty topical week last week. And so somewhere in all the activity that was going on, it was International Women's Day. It was, in, it was International World Book Day. Uh, well, World Book Day, not International. You know what I mean. <laughs> It's all good. Um, and, uh, you know, we had a whole bunch of things going on. And one of the things that we didn't actually do was mention that Steve Woody was the winner of our My Light Bulb Moment competition that was going on in there. There were some incredible bits of um, advice, resources, things to do when actually getting your book out there in the market. Yeah. So if you are currently looking at getting your book out there, go into the Connection Hub on the left-hand side, do a little hashtag my light bulb moment, and you will see all the posts that just will give you a wealth of information, yeah. things yeah, that you can do. Publishers posting, copywriters <sighs> posting, best-selling authors posting, all their advice. And you can basically just get a gold mine of information of how to write, publish and market your book. Yeah, the whole promotion kind of element. Things and that people did that just made it so much easier for them to get that done. Yeah. So and please Steve, do have a Steve's look. Steve was the best because he did a whole yeah. deep dive uh, yeah. Facebook Live with loads of links. Other people were already using his like banner stuff. Yeah. So we thought we'd give him the place and he'll be at our next Connect and Create Day. Which is That's on the, the 8th of Which is really rather good. So now today, let's look at today. Well, oh, actually one other thing that I will say is, so last week, if you missed it, go and have a look at the training that we did last week with Tony, uh, Tonya Hoffman. Yes. Because uh, there's also an opportunity because uh, the PSA are actually coming over and running a brilliant conference and there is a call for speakers. So yeah. if yeah. you are looking for a speaking gig, that might be a really good thing. So Kelly's I'm putting that in. I'm going to put the link in, in now. <laughs> Which is really rather good. So today we are looking at the different types of posts that you can actually do. And I'm almost hesitant at getting going on it because I suspect that we could be here for quite some time. <laughs> um, this is really about, you know, getting your reader or your listener or your audience's attention that avatar and actually really ensuring that you are meeting their needs hopefully you're not hearing the torrential rain no. we are probably under the effects of storm gareth that is coming our way it gareth it was george <laughs> <laughs> she's not that good with names <laughs> which is really rather good but really 
the posts that you put out, whether you're doing it on, you know, whichever platform you're doing it on, whether it's Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever it is, different types of posts will attract people in different ways. And having a blend of those is yeah. what we're really encouraging you to do. So we're almost going to do a, here's the type of post, here's what you can use it for, here's what we do with that so that you've got some examples to do it. And our quest really is, as you go through this, is to really say, oh, I use this or I don't use this very much, I could use it in this way. And for, to really stimulate your thinking around all of that. So there are some pros and cons to using all of them, depending on what your brand is and everything else. So we're just gonna explore those and allow you to understand how you could maybe reach more people through having a blended post approach, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, kick us off, girl. Okay, so we've got six types of different types of content. The first one is what we call the news jacking post, okay? So this is one which you can't prepare for. This is something which you can't have in your scheduled social media posts that go out, no. because you're responding to news that's currently happening on that day in that hour. Yep. So in that respect, what, what, we, what some people do in the news jacking is they actually end up being like the hub. Mm -hmm. So they're like, okay, we know that people want to be kept up with the news, yeah. but uh, to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever watched the news or read the newspaper since I was about that 10 That was where old. I just went when that was in my it's head. so bloody depressing, but, right? but there are topical news in your industry, right? Yes. So we're not talking always about headline news and, and you know what's on the television. We're talking about what's breaking in your industry. Yeah. So if, for example, obviously we work with speakers, authors and coaches, so we attempt to be the hub for you guys where we're actually finding out well, what's, what's the latest stats, what's yeah. the trends, what's going on at the moment. So you don't have to sift through lots of information. You can just come to the Connection Hub and actually feel like if you're active in there, yeah. you'll probably get to know about stuff when it happens. Yeah. So you can do that in your, you can be like the curator, mm -hmm. the go-to place, the gatherer of information in your field so that the person feels, well, I don't need to go and search for this. I'm just going to go to their just page, go here their and site. see what's relevant. Yeah, and what have they found out for me? So that's what we call the gathering side of the news mm -hmm. and being the curator. It's like a trusted advisor yeah, almost. Yeah, definitely. Or you, what you can do is you can actually hijack the news, which is the news jacking. Yeah. So you can actually take a story that's released and is breaking at the moment. Trending. Yeah, current affairs. And you basically take your view on it, put your opinions on it, actually give your slant on it. Mm -hmm. So it's more like, okay, so this is what's happening at the moment and this is what I'm, I think of my opinion. So I know there's so much political stuff, especially in the UK going on. But At the moment, certainly. Um, yeah, and I saw this when Trump was elected. Mm -hmm. So many people were um, like body language experts and they were looking, looking at his speech or Theresa May's speech recently and actually going, yeah. I don't think they're authentic at all because look at this, is, this is a telltale style of body language that they're not telling the truth or they're not comfortable with their message. That's right. So you can take topical stuff and slant it in your opinion mm -hmm. of what is currently going on. So yeah. there's the two types of news jacking. Yeah. You be the hub, the creator, the go-to place. Yeah. Or you take a news story, put your expertise, your opinion, your, um, your slant your on take, it, basically, yeah. and give people a, a, an opportunity to go, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think about this? Let's have a conversation about it. Yeah. So the reason why we like the news jack inside of things is because it helps you create authority in mm -hmm. your space, right? Totally agree. You're, giving, you're, you're saying, look, this person's a trusted advisor. I think that's the words that you just used. Yeah. They're a trusted advisor. They're explaining to me why they're thinking about this. They're demystifying whether this is fake news or not. Yeah. They're saying that this, in my opinion, I'm saying this isn't true because look at their body language. So you're there as a leading authority and somebody that they trust. Mm -hmm. So this is great when you're building long-term relationships with your online audience yeah. because the more you can give your opinions and your insight and your, your, your understanding of a topic, which is current, mm. they feel like, oh, I want to know. That, that, like, say, for example, there was one person, I'm going to give him a shout out, Daniel Priestley. Oh, right? absolutely. Loads of people know Daniel Priestley. And I love it when there's things in business or economy that are going on. He always gives a really detailed Facebook Live or a post about his opinion on stuff. Yeah. 
And I just love his insight because he backs it up with stats. He actually does it on all of his research. Mm -hmm. So he's the type of person that I go to for, when, for the news jacking side of things. I love his opinions. He, he's obviously much loved by everybody <laughs> else. People, yeah. There's all sorts of like <laughs> fluttering going on there. Really good. Okay. So this is what we wanted to think of. The first piece of contact is news jacking. Yeah. How can you use that? And, and for example, um, I'll put a post in here that we do. So we, as I said, we're the go-to place for speakers, authors and coaches. Yeah. So recently, um, I'm going to put this in the comments, Speakers Base, who's a company that we work with, yeah. they, re they release an annual report on what's going on in the speaker industry. They Highly say like relevant, how right? many people are paying to be on stage, how many people are paid, yeah. you know, the, the men and women that are professional speakers. So we basically will pick out bits of that and we had a whole discussion in the Connection Hub about people paying or not paying to mm. speak. Um, and so we will bring out that breaking news. That article, of that, that research paper only gets released once a year by these guys. Yeah. So we know that and we use that as news and we start at Topical. So I've put the link to the post that we put it's out. It's really interesting. So you, you can only view it if you're in the Connection Hub, yeah. right? So Because it's a Connection Hub post. But join us and have a look at that post. That's an example of us being a news jacking. Yeah, yeah? that's it. <laughs> now, now for, for some people, it's about the relevant day-to-day -day news. And that might be that you're looking at something like, you know, trends on on Twitter that if you are very very topically kind of minded that's definitely a thing to do yeah so there, there, there are things because I said to you before you can't do the scheduled posts yeah so you're gonna have to be responsive to this so using things that are alerting you to the news so yeah. like Helena said if you go on Twitter on the right, left hand side you've got the trending posts yeah you can use things like BuzzSumo, B-U-Z-Z-S-U-M-O, yep. to see what's topical on blog posts and what's going on at the moment. You can set your Google alerts hmm. so that you can actually have keywords. If a, if a news item comes up with a keyword yep. in, it will send a, an alert to your email, data, your email box to say, this has been mentioned, go and check out this article. Yep. And do stuff like, I've got, well, we've got a list of all the national days, you know, the crazy yeah. national days that they are out there. Yeah. There are some of them are weird and wacky. But that's something, again, that Cheese might be... Cheese rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> anyway. That's the thing. But there might be something which is relevant for you to actually jump on the bandwagon of what's trending that day because it's a national day that's related yeah. to you. So have those things set up, the trending on Twitter, the national days, the buzz sumo, the Google alerts, yeah. so that you are responding. Yeah. yeah. So for those of you, I'm going to move on to the next type of post, but for those of you watching, and there are nine of you or so at the moment, and probably some lurking <laughs> kind of people somewhere in the background, let us know, like, what, how do you use newsjacking, or do you, or might you. Yeah. So let us know about that and let me tell you about the next type of post. The next type of post really is what we're doing right here. It's what I call the teach post and it's really all around providing instructions to people. It's about some kind of action taking that you can teach to people. Think about, you know, it's a how-to of some kind or it might be a kind of generic background bit of information on something that's kind of abstract like Tell me more about marketing. It's like, okay, good. So let me educate you in some way. So the teach post has elements of helping people to do something. It solves a problem in some way. And, and one of the things that we really kind of want you to do, whether it's wide or whether it's niched, because you can do both around the teaching, is to pick a problem and provide a solution. Yeah. So tell them the step-by-step -step process that they need to do or outline it in the way that we are here. We've got six different types of posts. So now people have an expectation that they're gonna get information about six different types of posts, which is highly likely um, to be of interest to people because it's in your targeted niche towards your avatar. <laughs> <laughs> so you get it in, wouldn't you? <laughs> now, why do we like this kind of post? Well. Here's the thing, you can slice and dice it whether you are doing B2B or B2C, these posts work. You are teaching somebody something that they want to actually know. You can do it, you know, sort of like in any industry, in any field, because everybody needs to learn something about what's going on. It's what they're Googling, right? That's, that's exactly it's their Google it. search terms. They're solving a problem. You know, everybody kind of is looking for some help somewhere and your 
post will help them do what they're trying to do. So you are removing barriers and blocks. That makes you associated as the go-to person to remove those barriers and blocks. One of the things that we certainly do is, uh, for those of you who are in the Connection Hub, um, you'll see that on the left-hand side, if you go to files, you'll find the recordings of all of these trainings. That's a really helpful thing because we do a lot of how-to. They all start practically with how-to. How <laughs> it would be really nice to see out of the 58 or so that are in there, like how many are I did this there? one is not a how-to. I know. The six types I of know. It was like, <laughs> I, I, it's quite impressive, isn't it? It's, it's got to be done. So uh, we also really like it because they are great for SEO because you're using the natural language that people are looking for in in doing it you know what type of posts get the most attraction that's usually kind of the question that comes at us which is what kind of encouraged us to do this one um, but really it's about it allows you to be seen as the authority it allows you to build your credibility if you're showing up consistently with good information in a way presenting it in a way that people really enjoy they're going to come back again yeah. and again and you're going to build up your audience and your reach and the way in which people see you the other thing we really like about it and you'll see this from some of our trainings is that you can attach something else to it which you know that download in some way that you can do it cheat um, sheet. That, yeah, that builds your database in yeah. you know it allows you to supplementary to the post add more value yeah. and you get names on your database which is really <laughs> rather good so as i said um the recordings of all of our trainings these are all how to's in some way they're all teach posts in some way and there's actually a really good one which kelly's going to put the Just link put in uh, which was uh, how to use uh, how, how to, to get, get leads uh, yeah. using a quiz and that was one of the most brilliant how to's where we not only did a how to but we brought in someone who we know as an expert to help you do that so um, Michelle's saying as a HR consultant she uses the news jacking service on LinkedIn she gets daily and weekly news bulletins yes. on employment law management leadership and HR policy then she repurposes as a part of her LinkedIn post and puts it in the newsletters exactly what we're saying today that's what we're talking about awesome. well done you <laughs> well done you so for those of you who you know what's your what's the favorite teach post that you've put out there how are you using this yeah um, whilst Kelly tells you about the next one so we've done so far we've done the news jacking and we've done the teach okay yeah. so this is the other one this is this is what we call the personal spotlight or the interest that the, the, the personal share post yeah. right and this one I think when I've seen uh, speakers, mm. authors, and coaches, and they put content out there constantly, yeah. this is the one yes. I would probably say that gets the most engagement, mm -hmm. right? So even though the other ones are very much about, you need to know this, you need to learn how to do this, etc. Yeah. This is the bit where people go, oh, let's take the mask off. Yeah. Let's understand that person. Let's get behind the scenes because mm -hmm. that's the bit that people are really interested in. Completely. They want to connect with you. Yeah. They, they want to understand why they're choosing you. They want to know you that little bit better so that they go, I know exactly why I'm with this person. So for those of you who show up regularly, morning, Amy. Um, <laughs> she's, just, she's just said <laughs> she literally say no, something. No, no, she just said that she's her her um her kitchen's taken longer than to do or something like that. So she's going to have to watch the replay. She joined oh, us for okay. the first few so, minutes. Hi, but. Amy. Uh, so you know, for those people who jo who who show up regularly, it's your personality that starts to come through, and people engage with people. We know this, right? Yeah. So you doing some kind of value post or personal insight and share post allows people to get to know you that little bit better so they trust your credibility because you've done a teach post they trust that you are you know finger on the pulse because you're doing some news jacking in some way they're seeing your opinions but now these types of posts allow them to get to know you almost like they were having a cup of coffee with you yeah so this is the, the reason why I think they're really popular is as all of those things that Helena just said, but if you've got if you're an authority figure, mm -hmm. you're always teaching how to do stuff. You're always giving them the practical advice. Yeah. The bit that they're really interested in is who do you surround yourself with? Yep. Who's who's in your little circle? Who do you spend your time with? What do you do hmm. in your daily routine? Like, is it all work? Do you, are you a six a.m. starter? Are you, you know, all those types of things? They want to know bringing you to life. They want to know your values. Yeah. But the bit that I think is when people get the most uh, um, most engagement is when they share their vulnerability. Yeah. 
right? So we've got this polished appearance as speakers, authors and coaches that everything's always great, everything's always perfect, we've got, we've got everything. Mm -hmm. And that's unrealistic, yeah. right? People will know that that isn't how it is every day. So if you share a post, not always like, you know, the deep, dark depths it's of all the not stuff about crumbling the drama. down, but just some personal stuff about you. Yeah. When things have got tough, when you've made, made a, a wrong decision, where you need some support, you need to ask for help, those bits yeah. are actually the bits that actually make go, oh, that person's They're real. Human. They're, They're human. human, right? So that's what I would say is that you don't want to do it all the time. Yeah. I see a lot of people do the whole violin thing and it does my head in because they know that they're just doing it to get attention. Yeah. It's it, just th this is not a strategic thing, <laughs> right? This is a personal Again, you share. you can't plan for this stuff. <laughs> no. However, you can plan mm -hmm. for the behind the scenes. Yes. So, you know, if we're at the retreat, running our retreat, we'll do a little live and show you the setup of the room and the people arriving and, and people yeah. feel like they're there. We had our Christmas party that was live streamed, <laughs> right? People that couldn't be there feel like it's there. Yeah. It could also be the fact that you might be doing a if you're if you're teaching technology, yeah. you could be sharing your screen and actually showing them how you're setting up a website. I think Steve Whitty did a half an hour teaching the Connection Hub last amazing. week, which is all about how to you know optimize your website. He was showing it all on screen. Yeah. So that's again, it's not yeah. always about your story. It's no. just more about the background, the yeah. behind in, the in, scenes. In our in our Facebook training on how to do a Facebook Live, you know, we snapped a couple of photos about what the setup looked yeah. like in the background, yeah. that kind of thing. And so Rachel, who I know yes. is an awesome PR lady, we she's saying you, this is how journalists find great content too. Yeah. So she, we're on the money. Yeah, we are. <laughs> so these are the types of things I want you to think about. What can you do? Is it the fact that you're sharing your values? Is it sharing vulnerability? Are you doing behind the scenes? You might also do interview with others. Yes. Because that actually helps you have that borrowed credibility. If yeah. you've got somebody that's really well known in your industry and you grab an interview with them mm. then again it's like oh how did they get to network exactly. with that person so oh, again, I didn't realize that they were working on but it makes sense that they're together yeah so that's what I would want you to do is think about how can you share those personal insights again it can't be planned these aren't scheduled posts mm. it's in the moment but places for people to connect with you from an emotional point of view what we're looking at. Read out Michelle. So Michelle's I use, awesome job, honey. I use the Teach Post 2 when delivering short training on GDPR. I did a video on LinkedIn which got over 25,000 views, then delivered a training session on subjects access request forms and the like. Went down quite well. Sounds like it went down very well. Sounds like it, so, but, but, but this is the whole thing. So that's actually, but Michelle, what I love about that is that you kind of married two things together. So GDPR, kind of newsworthy, or at least something that was going to be affecting businesses, yeah. and you did a teach on how to actually do it. So something that people were topically looking for, yeah. and you did a how-to. How amazing. Good for you, right? So just another example of this from, from our point of view of how we do those um, sharing personal stories is that in the Connection Hub, we have our hashtag Friday feeling where we always encourage you to reflect on your week as an individual, and we do too. Yeah. And we share the wins, the losses, the insights, the aha moments, the yeah. celebrations. So that's something, because we really want to make sure that everyone's connecting on yeah. the personal level. That's so that's it. an example. If you're in the Connection Hub, just look, hashtag Friday feeling, and read yeah. some of people's posts. And, it, and it's really interesting, because every, <laughs> I know hates she GDPR. hates GDPR. <laughs> it's really funny. But uh, uh, what's really interesting is, is that if you are running a group, people will model what you're doing as well. So you know, occasionally we will go in and share a personal insight in some way because More that's exactly, <laughs> it's true, open book and all of that, yeah, it's like, whatever. I'll, I'll share pictures of my dog. I'll, I'll, I'll share some of her secrets, don't worry, it'll be fine. Right, okay, so before I get in trouble, I'm going to move us on to, so we've done the newsjacking post, the teach post, the personal kind of spotlight or interest post in, in that way. Now, let's move on to the cheat sheet post. This is a more stylized or formal kind of version of the, the, the teach, teach post. post. This is much more about you taking some information. For example, the GDPR thing might well even fall into this yeah. if you had some kind of sign it's up for it. It's more of a it. quick version, it isn't is. it? It is. It's a summary. It's a, if you think about it, it's almost like a, a, an infographic that allows people to really um, understand things at a glance, get it 
they, it, all of the stuff that we've said already about the credibility, the authority, all of those things still stand. And so that's one of the reasons why we like them. But of course, we also like them because they are a sign up or a download that you can actually kind of have out there in the world that allows get you data. to attract people and get the data from people. It also does allow you to share your version of it, your opinion of it. So again, you've got that this is my take on it kind of From feel. my experience, all that type of stuff. Exactly. And because it's infographic in, in nature, or at least it might be short, sharp, sweet kind of content, it allows you to do kind of the quick and dirty version of it. So, you know, the it can be very catchy. The top five reasons why you shouldn't, the, the, the three mistakes you should never make, and that kind of thing. So, you know, they are catchy titles and things that people really want. Your avatar is kind of going, oh, I so need to read that. That's what we mean by, mean by this cheat sheet. It's the inhalable content. It is. Right, so it's not an ebook. Yeah. It's not something that's going to take them ages to consume and understand. It's literally, a, yeah. I can get this in three minutes and I can do something with it, yeah. right? But also on, on that note, it's also the kind of thing that it's not just them that is looking for it, it's probably their friends, so it's highly shareable. Oh, this is the um, stuff that people tag everybody do, 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 in, right? You, know. you, know, you need to read this, you need to download this. Exactly. So um, we have, we have uh, well, we have several of these, but one of the ones that is a real favorite for people is, what CRM should I use? So we have a CRM comparison, and Kelly's popped it in, the, it in the link so that you can actually see what we're really talking but about. But this is also one, because this is a bit of a, a my bug there. I'm in groups all the time and people go, oh, what CRM systems do you use? And then everyone starts going, oh, you should use Active Campaign. That's or it. And I'm like, nobody freaking knows because it's so bespoke on that person's business what they need their CRM system to do. Yeah. So in our live that we do around it and in this cheat sheet that yeah. Helena said, it's just the comparison to find out for yourself. Correct. Right? It's looking at all the ones that are out there. It and helps so, you evaluate yeah. rather than simply kind of be a grid where you go, oh, you know, sort of like... XYZ told me I should have this particular brand and you go uh, no <laughs> how do you how do we help you think things through that's what a cheat sheet does so and what I liked about what Kelly just said was when you are looking in other groups when you are looking at where your avatar is hanging out what is the question that they're asking all the time, the time. and what can you provide or create and provide that allows you to, to do the cheat sheet for them yeah. and then once you know we don't have to say the same information again and no, again we just, just Send them, them to the live or send them to the cheat sheet. <laughs> and, you know, that's not the stuff that really floats my boat is comparison exactly. to our own systems. It's not something I can really get excited about. <laughs> but we get asked it all the time. That's so right. It's like so, so, so actually, so the other key there is, is the cheat sheet post is the one that you get bored of. Yeah. So put all of that stuff that's boring for you to say that then stimulates the conversation that you want to have. Yeah. And that's really good. So we've done four. On to number five. And so this one is um, mainly, and I know people like Rachel are going to like this, this is what we call the media post, Whoa. okay? So the media post just means that it's highly, highly visual, yes. right? So if you had a blog, for example, <laughs> if, a, if a blog had an image in it, the stats show that it's 94% more 94. likely to be read, right? Just, to, just by adding an image. We all know the conversion now that if people have got video content that it's actually viewed a lot more than... Yeah. So the ranking is video, picture, text. That's it. Right, actually, yeah. video, audio, picture, yeah. text, should That's I say, because podcasts are now... Yeah, well, they're, really. They're, they're coming up to being the same as video, yeah. right? Some of them are taking over in some industries. Mm. So this is where we need to think about, okay, what's the media? How are you actually format it so you're not just posting text all the time? And how can you make that more um, viral? Because yeah. more people are going to uh, uh, want to share something. Yeah. Like our videos get shared and tagged and stuff because people think, oh, yeah. I know somebody that needs to hear about this. That's it. And, and people are more engaged when it's more of a personal approach. So when you've got images, mm -hmm. there's more of a chance for you to be more brand recognized because you can actually make that. All of our images in the Connection Hub have got our logos on, they're in our colors. So they're instantly recognizable as either yeah. Speaker Insight or Connection Hub yeah. images. Even we use Canva.com. I know lots yeah. of you will use that, but we yeah. use that as our stable thing to make sure all of our images are customized yeah. to be on brand. But then you've got the whole video side of things. Hmm. And if you've got a video, it's that element where people can actually really um, engage with you. Yeah. Like you guys could throw questions at us. Completely. Do, 
and that just goes well actually, we like how, that how well do they know their stuff let me see how they think on the spot are they yeah. just regurgitating information and they don't really know this they've never done it themselves we would never do that <laughs> we only practice what we preach right preach what we practice no no practice what we preach well <laughs> done well done keep going you're good you're doing well so we want to make sure that the the media posts how are you actually showing something where people feel like they're in the moment, mm -hmm. right? So I can't share images in the comments, so I might add but, a couple on yeah. here later. But when we're like at events, we'll always take selfies, we'll mm -hmm. take pictures of the audience and we'll go, look, next time come to this event or look at us about to go on stage and are you Ke in the audience? Ke Kelly says we'll always take selfies. It takes us a little while to do it. Yeah. Like we Neither usually are like doing the setting the scene and everything else and then we go, oh, oh we, we should, should take a, a selfie. selfie. <laughs> Neither of us are very like photo orientated yeah. selfie it's like, people. Oh, yeah, hang but, on. Right. Yeah, we know when we do, people go, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember the blue room when I came exactly. to the retreat, and it exactly. brings back memories. Yeah. So just think about how can you actually make your life come, well, make your world come to life for your audience? Mm. How do you make them feel like they're there with you? How do you make them feel more engaged? How do you make your brand stand out so you're instantly recognizable? Yeah. Um, and, and share imagery, share yeah. video, and then, as I said before, it's the yeah. podcast and stuff. Okay, so, yeah. got so if you just read out Michelle, Michelle. you'll see she, she's backing you up. Too, totally agree. We image and video. I use clips on iPhone, which allows you to include transcript images and different videos all in one video. Yeah, clips and great. apps only available great on tip. phone. Yeah. Clip, as she said, clips is an app only available on iPhone yeah. because iPhones are the best, basically. And this is the point at which we start to fall out, and I nudge her <laughs> anyway. For the Android lovers, don't worry, we have alternatives anyway. Right, so that's the media post, bringing your world to life, making it highly visual, highly engaging, and making people feel like they're part of your world. Yeah. So the final thing is, and we were thinking about this when we were sort of just kind of highlighting this. We're... I think we're entertaining, but we don't do the entertaining posts that often. No, so we don't do like the... The funny, funny ones, funny you know, ones. the make them laugh ones, or the, even the intriguing ones. Like, we're better at the intrigue ones. But the entertaining post is really the one that kind of is a bright spot in somebody's day. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the break. It's, it's, they associate you with having a little bit of a laugh or a little bit of a... It's the <sighs> funny cat videos, isn't it? Really? <laughs> In our case, actually, not, nothing to do with videos, cats. It's yeah. all about the dogs. It's all but, about the dogs. But for us, it but, doesn't feel right to go into the Connection yeah. Hub and be posting, you know, on my personal feed, I will probably like, yeah. like quite a lot of funny dog videos. Yeah. But that's not relevant for speakers, authors, and coaches. That's right. So, for example, we do put some stuff in there every now and again. I think we did one about... Um, what it's like to be a freelancer and yeah. people were asking to basically pay you on commission or later or whatever or can you do it at mates rates and those funny types of yeah. images but we don't do a lot because you've got to make sure that it's still it's relevant. relevant right you don't just post stuff for the yeah. sake of it that's your personal page yeah. or profile but having said that though you know sort of like the quirky humor that you might have it helps to kind of humanize you or personalize you you know because different there are different levels of humor aren't there so you know if you're yeah. consistently putting out one type of entertaining post people go oh I sort of begin to get a sense of who that is and I think the word entertaining yes if it's humor and it breaks someone's uh, state or like yeah. just gives them a bit of a, a downtime but also we do do quite a lot of posts I think I put one up the other week which is um, asking you are you a, an, an e-reader or a physical book yes. reader right yes. so that's entertaining because people you can see the split exactly. and most people were like I have to have a physical book because I need to be able to smell the pages. That's or right. I can't deal with it in sunlight. I need my, my yeah. Kindle. So you can do an entertaining post. And these are actually the ones yeah. that actually get, not the engagement, which I said about the, the vulnerability in yeah. the show, but these are the ones that get a lot of comments. Yes. So these are, these, are, these are kind of the, the, the ones that keep on going, the ones that people, they feel safe. That's the thing. They feel safe to be able to comment on. It's light material. Yeah. Think light entertainment. So it's light enough for them to share their opinion without it being kind of like dark night of the soul or anything like that. Yeah, or the fact that they want, might be judged because they're not an expert enough. Yes. They might have imposter syndrome saying, well, I, I do this, but am I good enough to share that? And, and it's also stuff that everybody has an opinion on. You know, I can make my opinion on, do I like a physical book or do I like a Kindle better? You yeah, know, that kind of stuff. So, so it allows people to actually engage very easily and widely yeah. around something that isn't necessarily going to let them be judged. Yeah. So light entertainment, think about it in that way. So how can you base it? And that, those ones for me, I, I mean, I'm an administrator in another group and I, I put a post up a few weeks ago about 
um, what what are you feeling today? And there was about six mm. different faces on there that you were feeling stressed, happy, blah, 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 blah. And they just had to type in the comments. Yeah. So the comments were going crazy because people just <laughs> had to put one word answers in there. Yeah. But they felt like they were engaged and they were contributing and they were acknowledged. Yeah. But so think about how you can do a post. It doesn't have to be entertaining as humor. Yes. Please zone. don't just think about it like that because that's not really it's what not we us. do. But we funny. do love... <laughs> we're, we're totally not funny. We both think of ourselves as not funny, but apparently we are. Apparently. They laugh at us. I know, yeah, us. that's that's exactly what it is. I tell you, that's exactly what it is. But so so this is really a call for something that is think light entertainment. Yeah. Think or even edutainment, which I think is what these fall that's into. Why I think it's nice. Yeah. You come up with these funny words all the time. If she makes it up. <laughs> okay. So they're the six types of posts. So you've got the news jacking post, Hurrah. you've got the teach post. Yay. You've got the personal spotlight <gasps> or insight <gasps> post. Love the sound effects. Right. You You've got the cheat sheet Yay. post, you've got the media post, and you've got the entertaining or edu edutaining, edutaining yeah. post. We've now just changed the title of That's that. That's right. One. So think about, what I want you to do is go, what do you do a lot of? Yes, please. We want to know. What's your go-to? What does your LinkedIn, yeah. your Facebook consist of? And what could you put in that you're actually wanting to kind of create more of a blend? Yeah. What does your post feed blend need? Yeah. So it could be the fact that you need to be more, show more of your personality. Yes. You need to be, what's behind the brand? Get brave. Right? So then it's that personal insight. It might be the fact that you're completely wordy and you don't like to be on camera or on video. So Use all, pictures. Then do the less, less, <laughs> less, push you out of your comfort zone and do a bit more of a media one. Yeah. Or it could be that actually you need to be more topical mm -hmm. and you do the news jacking side of things. Yeah. So you actually need to have all those um, app set up to be notified when things are being topical or spoke about yeah. in your industry. And, and it doesn't mean that these have to take over your life. It could be that once a week you decide to look through the papers and you go, what's relevant for me that I could actually make an opinion on? Yeah. And just start. And that's our invitation really, is just to start to blend yeah. and see what happens. Because you don't know how your audience is going to respond until you do it. And, so and do news it. analytics, right? So no... Yes. When you can see if you're using Facebook, for example, go to your insights. going to scare them. Well, yeah, but if some people are geeky. I know, there, right? I know. Sid isn't geeky, right? I, I, I get it, I get it. <laughs> so I'm just, just saying. So just have a look and say what's actually performing the best. But also, f it's making sure that you're creating content that are all the learning styles that are out there, the visual learners, the auditory, the, yeah. the, the kinesthetic ones, the ones that are actually wanting to get information in a different way yeah. or different lengths or different formats, yeah. right? So if you're... My ideal for you guys would to be saying, look, we have one type of post of yeah. each of these six a week. Yeah. So that we know we can measure if it's, if it's actually being engaged in content, yeah. if it's being shared, yeah. and also which is the one that has the best performance. Mm -hmm. But we know that we're spreading all of the types of posts out to reach all of our audience. And some of this is gonna come down to your industry, your avatar, and the subject matter that you're an expert in. So some of the, you know, those things will naturally lend themselves to having a blend of three or three kind of core yeah. types of posts where you can add in the others for interest or light relief or whatever that is so so what's your perfect blend that's really what we're asking yeah. tell us in the comments whether you're watching it live or yeah. watching it in the replay just what is the thing that you you're going to start doing differently what type of post yeah. over the next month are you going to attempt to involve in your social media to see how your performance rates yeah, change. exactly and do come either back in here or just in the connection hub um send us a post to say i've been experimenting with this and this is what's happening we'd love to know yeah. right have a great week i hope it gets better weather wise and yep. storm storm gareth gareth not gareth George. that's right <laughs> and uh, for those of you we're seeing tomorrow at the connect and create day we're looking forward to seeing you uh storm gareth permitting and uh, <laughs> we will we will we'll take it from there see you week. next week have a great one